Just to start off here, just want to give you a, a, another idea of, uh, of, of the preacher we're talking about today, and, and certainly uh, folks are, uh, I'm sure, very aware of uh, what bed bugs look like these days, so I'm going to move on and start to get into the meat and titties of, of the presentation. Um, as Tom said, over the next uh, several minutes, I'm going to cover um, two separate uh, topics. The, the first is uh, discussing uh, suggestions for hiring uh, a, a professional pest management company. And the second is uh, touching on what's going on across the country um, with regard to, to bed bugs. What, what sort of policies are, are states looking at and trying to more aggressively tackle the, the bed bug uh, problem? And what is the federal government doing? Um, so with that, I'm going to start first with uh, just suggested tips for what you should look for when you're hiring a professional company. Uh, the first thing, and I, I think this is obvious, is, is always make sure that the company you're dealing with is a licensed company. Um, don't be afraid to, to ask for their credentials. Um, you know, make sure that they're licensed. I mean, that, that's the, the most basic thing. Make sure you're dealing with a professional company that has met the minimum qualifications of, of the state of Ohio. In the state of Ohio, uh, pest control companies are, are licensed and regulated by the Ohio Department of Agriculture. So if you want to follow up on a conversation you've had with the company, um, don't, don't be afraid to contact the uh, Ohio Department of Agriculture to confirm facts that company uh, sent you. Uh, definitely don't be afraid to do that. Um, another thing that is, I think, a, a real basic thing that you need to look out for is, is insurance. Uh, under o Ohio law, all um, pest management companies are supposed to be insured. Um, so if you ask a company and they say they're not insured, um, you know, bid that company adieu. Uh, I, I would strongly suggest not, not dealing with that company. Um, because again, there, there are specific requirements that uh, companies in Ohio have to meet with regard to insurance. Um, one thing about insurance in the state of Ohio is that the insurance that they have to carry, though, is specific to pesticide applications um, and wood-destroying insect inspections. So if you have a company that's performing a heat treatment, make sure that they have a specific policy um, that pertains to, to heat treatment, because it's, it's not necessarily required by the state. Um, but companies that do provide heat treatments have gotten special uh, policies with their insurance companies. So. Uh, make sure, even if it's a professional company, that the company you're dealing with, if, if heat treatment is the route you're going to go, make sure that that company is, is insured for, for that type of service. Uh, because not, not every policy um, covers heat. So just, just make sure that um, if you are going the, the heat route, that, that that company is insured to, to provide that, that type of service. Um, another thing, I think it's a real, real basic step. Um, ask to see if, if the company is a member of, of any professional association, whether it be the National Pest Management Association, the Ohio Pest Management Association, or the local association, the Cleveland Association, or wherever you live, the Columbus Association. Uh, make sure that they belong to, to these associations. And the reason that's so important is it means that they're, they're better able to keep up on current events, what's going on in the industry, what's the latest research, what are the latest tools. Um, it, it really does, I think, underscore the fact that, that they're interested enough to stay abreast of, of uh, all the evolving events within the industry. And, and one way you can find out if a company is a member at, at least of the Ohio and National Pest Management Associations is, go, is to go to, to our website at www.pestworld.org and that will allow, allow you to find a professional company in your uh, zip code. So, so definitely feel free to, to visit that site and, and check out uh, the, the companies in your area that are members of the, the National and Ohio Pest Management Associations. Um, an, another thing I would strongly suggest is, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later in my talk, is see if the company is aware of the National Pest Management Association's uh, bed bug uh, best management practices. Uh, th this is uh, a series of guidelines that the, the National Pest Management Association developed and enacted earlier this year that really is one of the most comprehensive documents that, that you can find that pertains to inspection and, and treatment for, for bed bugs. And if the company you're dealing with that, that has come to your, your door doesn't know anything about NPMA's uh, bed bug BMPs or they give you a blank stare in response, um, I think that's a warning sign. 
because this is a, a very comprehensive document that at the very least um, people in the field providing bed bug management services should, should be well aware of uh, because it is, it is a very valuable tool. Um, the next tip I, I would strongly recommend, and this is one you would probably use for any home services, is ask your friends, ask your colleagues, what, what companies have, have they dealt with? Uh, how satisfied have they been with the results of the companies that, that they hired or, or chatted with? Um, it's, all, it's always a good idea to, to chat with your, uh, with your friends and, and colleagues um, and, and, and see what, what sort of um, uh, satisfaction level they have dealing with the companies that they've been dealing with. A um, couple things to, to be aware of. Um, definitely be aware of, of companies that are going door to door, um, knocking, um, you know, especially if they're giving, you know, making a lot of exaggerated claims, um, saying things that are clearly um, attempting to, to scare you or pressure you in, into hiring them. Um, that, that's, that's a warning sign, um, you know. <coughs> You know, if, if indeed that's a company you're, you are interested in pursuing for whatever reason, don't sign anything at that point in time. You know, take a deep breath, take a pause, maybe <coughs> check out some other companies. Um, but, but certainly, if, if there is a company, you know, in your neighborhood going around door to door uh, using high pressure sales tactics, um, I, I would be very wary of that company. Uh, frankly, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably avoid it. Uh, another thing, uh, price. Uh, as Gene mentioned, um, bed bug services is costly, um, and I think Gene did a, White did a great job of explaining, you know, why the cost can, can be so costly. Um, so if, if there's a company going around uh, offering a deal that's too good to be true, um, it's, it's probably not true. So so just be be aware of that. Uh, that's, that's certainly something you should you should be aware of. And then before you sign a contract, uh, you know, make make sure that uh, you're clear of the terms. Make sure you're clear of the scope of the warranty. Uh, does the warranty in include return trips, um, or is it just a, 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 a kind of a, a one-stop um, document? Um, make sure you, you fully understand the, the contents of the contract, and you know just as importantly, the, the warranty that's contained within the contract. That's very, very important. Now, I touched on this a, a little bit earlier, but I, I want to spend a little more time on it, and that's the best management practices that NPMA uh, developed and, and adopted earlier this year. Um, as I noted, it's a very comprehensive document. It's a 24-page, 16-section uh, document that covers a, a multitude of, of the most important uh, aspects of bed bug management. Uh, we have English and Spanish versions, um, and we also have a four-page consumer version that is available um, on, on one of our, our bed bug specific web websites, and that's uh, allthingsbedbugs.org. Um, so I strongly recommend that you go to that site and check out the BMPs. Um, and just to give you an idea how comprehensive it is, I'm going to just walk through just some of the some of the sections that are, that are contained within within the document because I I do believe that that uh, the document does have a lot of value and you you know you certainly have some understanding of just how comprehensive the, the document is. Um, but it covers everything from service agreements, which I just talked about earlier, from the your standpoint, from the consuming public standpoint. Um, but we recommend to, to folks that they use service agreements for bed bug work. Um, so certainly, you know, that's something that um, as a consuming public, you know, you need, need to make, make sure, again, the terms of the service agreement and everything that's contained in there. Um, and it's certainly incumbent upon the company you're dealing with um, to be as clear as, as possible what is contained in, in that document, not just simply throw a document that's full of eight, eight point plot and expect you to read the entire thing. Um, it, it really is incumbent upon the company to walk through that document with you. Um, and if they don't do a good job of that, you know, that, that's, that's a warning sign as well. It's important that the company walk through the service agreement with you, very important. Um, another impo important aspect of the, the BMPs is disposal of, of bed and, and, and uh, furniture and, and other possessions. Um, this was an issue that uh, early on in, in the bed bug resurgence, uh, a lot of folks were recommending uh, just, just throw everything away, junk everything. Um, in this document, we recommend as much as possible to, to treat the infested items. And, and one of the reasons we do that is because, frankly, just junking stuff is, is really just spreading the problem. Because in many cases, people are just simply picking up items that have been discarded 
and essentially spreading the, translocating the, the problem to, to another site. So certainly there may be some difference in the way commercial uh, clients will deal with things as opposed to residential clients, but as much as possible, we, we do urge folks, uh, pest management companies, uh, to, to treat the items that have been infested and, and not just simply automatically uh, throw them out or, or have consumers uh, discard them. Um, it, it also, frankly, will save costs from the consuming standpoint uh, because having to throw out all furniture and, and then replace it can, can be very costly as, as well. So I think the, the key from, from your standpoint, from the consuming standpoint, is to, to find the treatment protocol that best fits when, within your facility. Uh, perhaps heat, heat, for whatever reason, doesn't doesn't fit well in the facility that you manage around. You know, per, perhaps you may have to rely on the chemical treatment route. Um, so just keep all of that in mind when you're when you're dealing with the uh, you know the myriad of, of uh, professional pest management companies that, that you've contacted. Is while there are a lot of services that do effectively manage bed bugs, you, you need to be most concerned. Uh, about the protocol that fits best within A, your facility, and B, your, your budget. Uh, because, you know, while, again, a lot of treatment methods are effective, they may not be feasible for, for your situation. Uh, so just keep that in mind, because um, that's, that's very important. Um, surrounding units, uh, another very important issue. Um, and we're very clear with, within um, the BMPs that surrounding units, at the very least, uh, need to be inspected. Um, you know, th this is certainly an issue that, that you know any any responsible company will 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 address. Um, surrounding units uh, really have to be addressed because I if you simply just uh, concern yourself uh, with a bed bug infestation in, in the unit that you got a, a call about, um, you're you're really you know kind of missing the big picture uh, because you know nine times out of ten. Uh, at least one of the surrounding units will, will probably also have a problem as well. Uh, perhaps the problem even originated in, in a surrounding unit. Um, so surrounding units really need to be dealt with um, in, in, a, in a, a management protocol, a absolutely. Uh, because if, if you don't, frankly, um, you, you're never going to fully eliminate or, or adequately uh, address the, the infestation problem. So um, again, um, those are just some of the uh, um, you know, specific points uh, from the bed bug BMPs, but again, I, uh, in order to, to go through them more carefully, I definitely encourage you to, to go to the website, allthingsbedbugs.org, um, and, and take a peek for yourself. Um, again, there's a, a four-page four uh, Reader's Digest version that uh, you can go through and, and really get uh, an understanding of what the full 24-page document uh, contains. Um, with that, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and uh, chat a bit about um, what states across the country are doing to address the, the bed bug resurgence. Um, and, and states are doing quite a bit. Um, while perhaps no state has been as hard hit as the state of Ohio, um, every state to some degree is, is experience, experiencing bed bug problems. Um, I mean, one of the reasons it, it may be a little worse in the state of Ohio is because uh, it, it looks like more bed bug strains, more bed bug populations are resistant to common insecticides than in other states. Um, so per, perhaps in Ohio, it, it is a, a much more difficult problem to deal with than, say, uh, Idaho or New Mexico. But that doesn't mean that those two states aren't dealing with, with bed bug problems. Um, every state in the country is, is dealing with some bed bug problem in some way, shape, or form, even Alaska. Um, so you know, just, just know that this, this is by no means uh, an Ohio-specific problem. Um, but states, uh, you know, as Gene mentioned, this is the, Gene White mentioned, this, this is not the first time that, that we've dealt with this problem. Um, bed bugs were a, a major problem in the early part of the 20th century, and a number of states enacted a bed bug policy um, back in those days. And most of those states still have those bed bug specific policies on, on the books. So we have some states with bed bug specific policies as old as, as 100 years. Um, now, it, it is kind of interesting to compare what laws from the early 1900s look like uh, to, to the laws that we pass uh, these days, because in many cases they're very black and white. And it will be interesting to see how early 20th century law collides with a 21st century litigious society. Um, I, I imagine when there is a collision, then some of those laws will, will quickly change because, uh, as I said, some of those laws are, are very black and white. 
Um, but one of, the, one of the states that actually does have uh, what I call a bed bug legacy law is the state of Ohio. Uh, now, Ohio's law is specific to hotels, um, but as you can see, it's, it's a fairly black and white law. There's no ifs, ands, ors. Um, it's pretty black and white. And in the statute, it says, no bedding which is infested with vermin or bed bugs shall be used on any bed in any hotel. That's, that's pretty clear. There's, there's not a lot of wiggle room in that statement. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see um, if at some point in time somebody uses that, uh, that particular provision uh, to, to take um, you know, a, a court case or bring a lawsuit against uh, a hotel in the state of Ohio. But again, that's a pretty good example of uh, a lot of the early 20th century uh, bedroom specific laws that, that we've seen. Um, now, what, what are some reasons that lawmakers or elected officials um, would be driven to introduce or push bed bug specific <laughs> policy other than the fact that it's a, it's a problem. Um, you know, so what are some of the, the, the reasons? The main reason, I think, by a long shot, is um, affordability. Um, basically, they want to assign fiscal responsibility for, for managing bed bugs. Um, legislators, uh, lawmakers across the country are hearing from their uh, lower income and even middle income constituents um, who are, are begging, pleading them uh, to provide some sort of relief. In many cases, these are constituents that maybe uh, got a, a bed bug infestation in, in their unit through no fault of their own. They're living in a unit where perhaps they're paying $250 to $300 a month in rent and they're told that a treatment of their unit is, is going to be $400 to $500. Well, the math obviously doesn't, doesn't add up. There, there's no way that they can afford a, a treatment of, of, that, of that cost. So they go to their, their lawmakers. They go to their elected officials, and they ask for assistance. Um, and that's really what we're seeing in, in a lot of states, is elected officials uh, putting forward proposals uh, that literally assign financial responsibility to, in many cases, uh, landlords. Um, but in some cases, they are assigning responsibility to tenants who do not cooperate um, with the, the management of bed bugs. Um, and, and I'll walk through some of those, some of those laws. A second a major driver is the need, the interest of, of lawmakers and, and elected officials to protect a jurisdiction's a hospitality or tourism industry. Um, no place wants to be known as the bed bug capital of the world. That's not very good for tourism. That doesn't bring the conventions or big dollars or uh, people to stay at, at hotels. And, and you know, why, why is it so important to have that type of business? Tax revenue. That's great tax revenue. Uh, the, I just stayed at a hotel last night. It's 16% tax. That's, that's great revenue for the, the city of Cleveland and the state of Ohio. They don't want people to be deterred from staying at hotels because they think they might bring bed bugs home. They, they don't want that. So they, they have a compelling financial interest to do everything they can to convey a message to the public that bed bugs are, are not a problem here. We're, we're taking care of it. A lot of you probably uh, remember the news story from last summer when the uh, AMC movie theater location in downtown Manhattan was, was closed down because of bed bugs. And every single newscaster and their brother was standing a block uh, in front of the AMC theater with the big AMC marquee right in the background. Uh, I know there's an old advertising axiom that any publicity is good publicity, but um, I do have trouble believing that the AMC movie executives uh, sat there in their, their grand offices and said, wow, we're, we're really getting some great publicity. <laughs> I, I really have trouble believing that. And, and a lot of the surveys that we've conducted really drive that point home, that, that this is not good publicity. And the reason I say that is because it is very clear, based on the surveys we've done, that, that bed bugs are impacting consumer decisions. Whether it's uh, an action as modest as checking a hotel room for bed bugs when you check in, to not even staying overnight in a hotel room at all. Um, and I can give you a good anecdotal example of this. I, a friend's mother I bumped into the other day, and she mentioned to me that she was going to be taking a, a trip to, to New York to to go shopping and, and have dinner. And I asked her, well, you know, are you gonna catch a, a play on Broadway and stay over? She said, oh, no, goodness, no, bed bugs. <laughs> and, and again, you know, I know, I know and I've seen a lot of stuff in the city of New York saying, oh, this isn't impacting us. But 
I mean, just based on that anecdotal example, I'm, I'm sure there's there's people off and down the East Coast that would otherwise stay in New York overnight, but are not because of all the publicity um, related to bed bug infestations in, in New York City. Um, I'm, I'm quite certain that, that my friend's mother is not the only one that is, isn't staying over in a New York City hotel because of bed bugs. Um, again, it, it, it's impacting commerce. It's, it's impacting consumer decision making, and and that is a, a you know, that alone, frankly, is a reason that public policymakers should, should be uh, interested in addressing this issue, and aggressively addressing this issue. Uh, I mean, we're in, we're in a country now in the middle, you know, middle of, of hard economic times, and to know that people are not making purchasing decisions because of bed bugs, um, that's, that's like a double win. So, you know, clearly lawmakers, public policymakers do have uh, all the compelling reasons try to address this problem in, in some way, shape, or form. Another issue that uh, uh, I don't think any state, um, more than the state of Ohio, has taken the lead on is trying to provide uh, additional tools to the professional pest management industry. A lot of you have probably read uh, news accounts over the last couple of years of the state of Ohio uh, requesting of the federal government uh, permission to grant authority to professional companies to use uh, an insecticide um, that was previously on the market. Um, the Ohio Department of Agriculture uh, submitted a request to uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in October of 2009 um, to permit its uh, professional companies to use a pesticide known as, as propoxin. It's a product that had, had long been on the market, been used for, for many, many years, um, and had just been phased out not, not long ago. And it was phased out because manufacturers did, didn't want to provide additional data that had requested them. The manufacturers made the determination that you know the, the cost to generate this data is just really not worth the sales of this product. So we're, we're going to go ahead and let those uses lapse. Um, and, and one of those uses, you know, were in, indoor uses for to, to manage bed bugs. So the state of Ohio went to, went to EPA and said, you know, we, we would like to, to bring this product back in the state of Ohio uh, for our professional um, pest management companies to allow them to use to address our ever-growing bed bug problem. Uh, because uh, bed bugs in, in a lot of instances in the state of Ohio are resistant to some of the more common chemicals that, that, are, that are used. Um, in June of last year, uh, EPA rejected the Ohio Department of Agriculture's uh, request. Um, they said that they felt the use pattern that the Ohio Department of Agriculture had requested uh, posed an, an unreasonable uh, risk to children. Um, and just to show you just how, how high this issue went, uh, then Governor Strickland wrote three letters to EPA Administrator Jackson, including a letter in his final days in office. So the idea that an outgoing governor would, would take time to write a letter about bed bugs shows you just how important a political issue this, this is in, in the state of Ohio. Um, now, just to give you a, a current status report of this, this application, uh, EPA is is continuing to review uh, whether or not to uh, allow the use of propoxer, just not under the, the use pattern that uh, the Ohio Department of Agriculture first requested. They're, they're looking at various risk assessments and looking at use patterns with which they would be comfortable with. Um, so this is a, a pending issue. Um, it's also an issue that a lot of Ohio state lawmakers have, have weighed in on. Uh, I know there's a state lawmaker who's going to speak later, so I'm really not going to get too much more into what's going on specifically in the Ohio legislature, but, but just know that certainly there's no state that has pushed more uh, aggressively uh, to, for additional tools to manage bed bugs in, in the state of Ohio. Another driver that we're, we're seeing uh, a lot, uh, certainly from at least a few states, is um, lawmakers are taking the attitude in the absence of a silver bullet, in the absence of a, a product or method that's going to immediately manage bed bugs. Uh, we think the consuming public uh, has the right to know uh, whether or not the, the unit that they're looking to rent for a year or the hotel room they're looking to rent for a night has been infested with bed bugs within the last year or whatever period of time. And we have seen some states pass uh, laws um, specific uh, to notification of bed bug infestations. And, and the best two examples of that are, uh, are Maine and, and New York. They both have uh, right to know provisions 
in the bed bug laws that they passed last year. Um, but again, earlier I mentioned that you know every state in the country is, is battling in some way, for, way, shape, or form uh, bed bug problems, bed bug infestations, um, and nothing illustrates that better um, than the list up on the screen. Um, in the last two years, 14 states uh, have considered bed bug specific legislation, and this year alone, 13 states have considered about 35 bed bug specific related bills. Um, and we actually had three states uh, this year pass bed bug specific bills uh, Arizona, Maine, and New York. Um, Arizona's uh, new law is, is fairly simplistic. It requires uh, landlords to provide both existing and new tenants with uh, information, educational information about bed bugs, uh, you know, things to look for, ste steps to take to, to manage or prevent bed bugs. And it also requires uh, tenants to notify. Uh, landlords, property managers, as quickly as possible if they, they find an, an infestation. Um, and states certainly are not the only uh, jurisdictions looking at, at addressing bed bug problems. Uh, localities across the country are, are looking at bed bug problems as well. Um, and certainly the fact that so many localities are, are looking at this issue um, does have a lot of the folks in the apartment community uh, very nervous. Uh, they're certainly worried about having to comply with dozens of different bed bug related laws within a particular state. Um, and that's why in the state of Arizona, they actually included a provision in their law that precludes or preempts local governments from passing ordinances related to, to bed bugs. Just because the Arizona Multifamily Housing Association, <coughs> excuse me, and its members really just wanted to deal with one statewide policy as opposed to a myriad of differing policies through, throughout the state. Um, so certainly the idea of, of dealing with one uniform policy in, in a given state is something that a, a lot of the apartment community at least are, are really uh, interested in doing. Um, and then lastly, I just want to close talking about some stuff that's going on at the, uh, at the federal level. Um, first of all, the, there is some, some pending federal legislation. It was uh, introduced by a congresswoman from the Cincinnati, Ohio area, uh, a lady by the name of uh, Congresswoman Jean Schmidt. And she introduced the uh, bed bug uh, management uh, prevention and research act of 2011 in March. Um, it does a few things. Uh, the first thing that it would do is it uh, authorizes a federal bed bug research funding program uh, to resume research that uh, um, for the most part has been neglected for the last 50 years. Um, it also requires uh, efficacy testing. Um, it requires that manufacturers of, of products known as minimum risk pesticides which are pesticides of such a low toxic nature that the Environmental Protection Agency has exempted them from regulation completely. Um, that the manufacturers of these products um, submit efficacy data or proof that their products work uh, to the Environmental Protection Agency. And if that data doesn't substantiate that these products work, uh, that they not, not be permitted on the market. Um, so those are really the two main things it does. And then finally, uh, a couple other notable um, federal-related activities. Um, in August of this year, the US, um, uh, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, issued uh, guidelines on, on bed bug management. Um, if you're not already aware of it, uh, it's something that can be easily accessed through a, a Google search. If you go uh, just to HUD bed bug guidelines, it'll, it'll come right up. But um, uh, the HUD, HUD bed bug guidelines actually reference uh, NPMA's uh, best management practices. Um, and then lastly, um, last year, uh, this is a document I think is very useful to uh, local departments of health. Uh, last year, the uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Centers for Disease Control um, produced and published a document, uh, which is a joint statement on bed bug control in the United States. Um, and that makes clear that uh, while bed bugs themselves are, are not a disease uh, vector per se, that they are a significant public health pest and they do pose uh, real public health problems. Um, a lot of folks had, had always you know, stressed that they weren't a disease vector, and while that's true, um, there certainly are a lot of health-related issues um, with regard to, to bed bugs and, and bed bug infestations. Um, so with that, that's really all I, I had for prepared to talk.